<laughs> I, I am so geeked up. I, I can't know. even begin to tell you. Sarah eyes in Welcome you. Welcome to the I mean, big show. I just, you just talk about a burrito blowout. I mean, you know I love a burrito blowout. And let me tell you something. I don't know what they were talking about. That, that ain't seasonal. I mean, that's year-round. That's 24-7, 12 months a year, sister. Well, it's amazing. He was talking about the price elasticity and the ability to raise price even further when he was saying that some local restaurants charge 20, 30 percent more than they do for a chicken burrito, which implies that there's that sort of 20 to 30 percent increase on an $8 burrito. So that gets to the question, Guy. 57, 58 mm -hmm. forward P.E., you pay that for Chipotle. Listen, it's expensive. And listen, you know, I mean, the stock has gotten crushed over the last couple of months, but it's having this big move in the after hours. You know why you pay it? Because I think they figured out the digital game almost better than anybody out there. And I think there's the growth engine behind it. So although it is an expensive stock by any standard, put it up against McDonald's is probably more than two times its valuation. But I, I think I really like CMG here, and I think you're going to see a lot of analysts start to raise their numbers tomorrow. That's just my thought. But I'm partial, as you know. And I can tell the audience what I eat if they want to get me a burrito. It would be a extra chicken burrito, chicken, extra chicken, no, no beans, beans no white tomatoes. rice, medium I sour know. cream, and cheese. Thank you. Back to you. I know that order well. <laughs> um, let's get to the reports that Microsoft could be interested in buying Mandiant. Now, we've been covering Mandiant since it's part of FireEye. We covered FireEye when that was hot. But what would a deal like this do for Microsoft? Well, I mean, think about it. It's a rounding error for them. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? Maybe an $8 billion deal, but it gets them into the cyberspace. And we've talked about that space now for the last couple of years, I think, on CNBC's Fast Money, which until this week appeared each night at 5 p.m. We're being <laughs> usurped, which I don't know how to spell, by the Olympics. But I think it makes a lot of sense. Again, low risk, high reward. I don't think anybody has verified it. Um, but where there's smoke, there's fire. And if you look at some of the other names in the space, Zscaler's had a huge run, um, Palo Alto Network. So... I think it makes sense and it's just Microsoft sort of flexing here they can do what they want when you're a 2.3 trillion dollar company I mean these bets you know if they don't work out it's not a big deal and if they do work out you have some upside so good for them by the way I mean I love the name Mandiant of course I know you and both Sarah think of Barry Manilow when you hear it but that's probably for another show <laughs> not, not actually what I was thinking but guy I did want to bring up <laughs> Alcoa because I know you like this yeah you did not so not yeah, so boring you did Alcoa up 10% to up 220% in the last 12 months. Aluminum prices near 12-year highs. How long have you liked this stock, and what do you do now? Well, the last time we were on together, I believe it was the fall, and this was, I think, a $49 stock-ish, and I was on with you and Wolf, and you made me do a power pitch. Mel, you're familiar with the power pitch on CNBC's Fast Money. It was sort of an offshoot of that uh, for Closing Bell, and I said, listen, I just think that the fundamentals line up and the environment that we find ourselves in really lines up for these resources trade, and Alcoa is at the top of the list. Look at what's going on with that aluminum prices. There's just not a lot of it anymore. And just think what Jeff Curry said the other day from Goldman Sachs. He's never seen a commodity cycle like this in his 30-year career. So although Alcoa has had a tremendous run, as you just outlined, I still think there is uh, more room in the name to the upside. For the record, neither Sarah or I thought of Mandy. Barry Manilow. 100% <laughs> certain of that Listen, guy. Can I tell no you something? Of, I guarantee no that people that. watching this show, well, you're, you, you're false. It's, you're wrong, R-O-N-G. I got to tell you, Lisa Villalobos, who's in the control room, was lolling. I know that because she thought of him. And half your audience did as well, by the way. House of the Wolf always lolls. Guy, good to see you. Go curl, because <laughs> that's what you do during Fast Money during the Olympics, right? We curl. See you later.